below, Gary Ray Smith, The Knitting Man. And this week, uh, we're going to be looking at my current whips. We've got two. Uh, we've got the off-piste Fair Isle vest. And we are going to start today. Um, we won't cast on today, but we will start drawing the new hair baby blanket. This week we are, I'm going to start off, I think, um, looking at the new hair uh, baby blanket pitch in it. And um, um, after that, I'll probably update you on where I am with the Feral vest. OK, so we're going to talk, first of all, how I start to make um, a baby blanket. Now, um, I start with my original drawings and I usually do lots and lots of drawing. I don't just do one um, one drawing. I do I do loads and then pick the best one. Um, these are all hair drawings. So um, originally what was Atlas's blanket, that's which you all know, that's Atlas's blanket. Um, originally when I drew it, uh, I drew it as one of my ghost jumpers. So it was not that one although that is probably more original than the other one that I was going to show you but yes yeah, so uh, if we go back to Kit Williams um, this might have been one of the first drawings that I did so and I'm probably referencing my swallows jumper as well when I put that bird in there but um, I'm probably looking quite hard at my source material which would have been the drawings of Kit Williams and and so um, that was a lot closer, perhaps, to uh, his drawings. So as it developed, it would have developed into something more like that as a jumper. And that probably was the plan originally, that it would be a jumper. And then it became Atlas's blanket, which is that which did end up getting knitted. Um, and I've got one other drawing in here. Oh yes, and this is another blanket design that I did, which is for Vera's blanket, um, which hasn't yet been knitted. So um, what I'm thinking of doing here, this time round, is I want to do a little baby blanket but I want to make it at the same size that it could potentially be. Get there in the end. That jumper. So I'm going to make it the design to that scale. Now, if you saw me cast on my uh, off piece um, vest the other day, you'll know that I cast on 368 stitches. Well, so. I need the pattern to just be the front or just the back. So um, I need to make the pattern 184 stitches wide. Now I know that with the rib, uh, this jumper, which is my Swallows jumper, that comes out uh, about 200 stitches high. So if I was to make the baby blanket 184 wide by 200 200 high I could yet then use that same chart might need to tweak it slightly 
but I could yet then use that same chart to make a vest pattern. So what I now need to do is measure or get my graph paper and measure the size on my graph paper of that. So that 184 by 200. So once I've done that, I can do a drawing that size and then I can trace that drawing onto the graph paper and then I can knit from that. So, um, by the way, I tried uh, earlier on, this is obviously my, which I will be talking about later. This is my new off-piste vest that I'm doing. And so I put it onto two sets of needles and I showed you a couple of weeks ago that I might be working with two sets. So I'm working with two sets of circular needles so I can open it out because obviously on the, on just the one set it was rather tight. But um, I also knew that I'd want to do that so that I could measure it against the body. So I have this morning tried that on and I think it fits rather nicely. Uh, Mrs Smith, she said you should have measured your belly, not your chest, because she thinks it's a bit snug across my belly. But then she's just being cheeky. So now I'm going to go off and I'm going to draw, find out what the measurement is on my graph paper that I need to make the drawing. Uh, so this is uh, the graph paper that I use. Uh, I don't know if you can see in there. It's a C White of Brighton graph paper that I get from my local, but I'm sure you can get it online. Um, on one side, it's got um, 10 or 100 squares uh, to 10 millimetres. So they're millimetre squares on one side. And on the other side, the squares are an inch. And that's the size that I use. So I'll just show you. So there's 10 squares, 10 by 10 to the inch square so I use that that size so what I need because I'm going to do um, 184 stitches by 200 so that's 20 that's 20 inches and 18.4 inches so that's the size of the drawing that I need to make which is much bigger than one of those so I'm now going to go and find a big piece of paper and I tend to use um, recycled paper um, uh, when I've worked for sign companies in the past. Um, that old uh, blueprints tend to just get thrown in the bin, so I've kept them. So I like to use the reverse side of those because you get nice big sheets for free, but they're also they're nice because they've got blueprint on the other side. So um, I'm going to go and draw that size out onto a big piece of paper now. Okay, so I've, I've drawn out, um, it, so it's 20 inches high by 18 and a half inches wide. Um, so um, there's 10 stitches to the inch on this drawing, which is gonna be on the graph. But of course, when I actually come to knit it, I'm going to be knitting eight stitches to the inch. So this is just slightly smaller than actual size. Um, and as you can see, I've got I've got a lot of my reference material around me. And um, uh, talking to um, the knitting widow, she said that she'd like to see this hair on it. And also I felt that I didn't want anything because because we're reducing it down from the size of Atlas's blanket. Atlas's blanket has the um, brambles coming across the front of the hair. And I, I felt like because we've, we're we going to tighten it, it's, it the hair is only going to be small. There's not going to be enough room to get all of that in. So I'm just going to have the hair plain. I'm losing the angel on the back of the hair for this, this one. But I quite like the idea of 
if there are brambles or, or any vegetation that's sort of below him and coming up and round the sides. But also I quite like the idea of, of there being blank space like in this one, maybe not so much blank space, but a bit of blank space. So all of those things will be taken into consideration. So I'll, um, I'll ask Joe to stop filming now and maybe Joe, you could film a little bit of of my studio that you you think sort of bearable that people could actually watch with with your permission so i'll get joe to do that now and then you can come back to me and you can have a look at how i've got on <laughs> So I just want to, um, I'm, I'm looking, I'm, I was looking at this, how I'd originally sort of set the hair up and I'm thinking, well, if people want to knit it a smaller size, they might want to sort of be chopping lumps off and then we're getting really close to his nose. So I was thinking of maybe going back to this original drawing and if I get some greenery coming down the sides here, then the hair can be in this kind of space here there and then we can get the greenery and if we lose a bit of leaves off there because people are knitting it a smaller size then it won't matter as long as the hair hair's the main thing in the middle so i'm i'm going to move it in and i might actually because i was originally thinking oh well i could just swap him round but i might actually stick with it and keep him going from left to right so he's going somewhere um, I don't know if people know, but usually in like children's illustrations, in children's books, um, if you're going somewhere, you go uh, left to right. And if you're coming back, you go right to left. Um, uh, you'll start looking and you start seeing that now, I've told you. Um, so, yeah, I might actually stick to something quite close to this, I was thinking. Maybe lose that and keep that. And I really quite like these quite big flowers. I mean, they look big on here, but I don't think they will be once once they start to um, be made. And I quite like this one coming in here. So so at the moment, I'm just messing around. So I'll get Joe to um, maybe do a few do a few little um, films of me just just messing around with shapes. But I'm I'm very much in my mind thinking that that's I can't get the hair outside of there. He needs to be within that kind of space. So I'm here, I'm just sort of looking at sort of flows and just trying to rough it in really. Nothing set in stone at the moment. There's a lot more to the process. Get that arch of his back in there somewhere and his tail comes up there. Something like that and then the back of his leg arches round and he's got like a pointy bit there 
it comes down. I quite like that the feet were quite big on Atlas's blanket. You know, they were quite paddy, which I quite liked. And then there's another bit coming in there. Like that. So he's more springy, this one. So I'm not, I'm, I'm looking at my last drawing, but you know, there's, there's nothing, you know, I can, I can play around with it a bit. And there's not a massive amount of detail, which is great. I'm, you know, trying to really, obviously the eye, which I was talking last week about, you know, getting an eye in 25 stitches. And that is the, you know, the, it's when you get to the detail that you've got, you've got issues really when you're knitting, because it's, um, you've got a little space to get quite a lot of detail in. And you can see as I'm sort of sketching, my the most recent pencil marks are, are get heavier so I don't rub those ones out necessarily well, I might at the end but you know they're like my workings out So yeah, I quite like him. He's coming on. Thin that leg down, but I want to keep, I want the paws to be quite big. Almost as if that foot sort of coming out towards you a bit. And then this paw comes down there like that. I don't know yet whether he's going to have a mouth. He might have a, a sort of a mouth like my or a suggestion of a mouth. Don't know. We'll see. That curves around there. He looks quite sort of playful. And then his ears, I want them to be quite big. And then I was just thinking about where the V is going to come if it, if it does become a V. I, I want the, the ear below that V. So I'm just sort of thinking roughly. I'm just roughing in some little marks that V and the shoulders there for if it does become a vest I'm not going to leave that in because I'm doing a drawing for a blanket um, so the arch of the ears is more like that maybe I will lose that bit there and then the second ear in below Okay, so now I'm quite happy with that. I, th I, th I think he's pretty okay. I think. Okay, so I will, there will be lots of changes to this Joe, so it's not perfect yet. I will mess around with it for ages just you know changing curves and lines to get happy I actually quite like it it's a bit slightly more dynamic than this one here uh, this um, for for people watching um, this was uh, a drawing I did for Vera's blanket which is the only blanket I haven't made yet and the idea behind it was before uh, Vera was born um, she had a little bro a little brother or her older brother Florian and um, and so the idea is that that um, this is Florian who's an angel baby um, and he's looking after Vera and it has words that go around the outside of Vera's blanket and one day I'll get that made and maybe in the future you'll see me make that but 
Florian's our, our angel grandson. And um, the idea is that he's looking after his little sister. So I'm just messing around with um, shapes at the moment and some of them will stay in and some of them will get weaned out and I quite like to keep them quite loose because I don't want and I think I said this last time I don't want my petals necessarily to look like petals or my i want you know i want quite loose shapes so i can't tend to draw them quite loosely um so as you can see the drawing process takes quite a long time so what i was thinking was um you could sit watching me all day i know you could but um uh, no, we we <laughs> we um, what we were thinking was what we'll do is we'll come back at the end of the drawing because I wanted to see uh, you know I was talking about push and pull last week so I wanted to um, talk about the push and pull thing so and and what I tend to do as well which you'll see next week so so if we stop there on the baby blanket uh, design uh, side of things and then next week we'll do the push and pull thing but we'll also what I tend to do because I'm trying to get rid of detail is when I start painting I start painting with a thick brush and that thick brush gives me like you know two or three stitches width on every line so when it comes to knitting you, it's something that's possible to knit whereas if I was using like a fine tiny little detail obviously when I start filling in the squares I'm using a tiny little brush and filling them all you know in meticulously but at this point I don't want to do that I want to I want to break it down I want to simplify it I want to make it um, as simple as it can possibly be at this stage so uh, that's what we'll do next week um, and I'm also I'm also aware of time this week because I want to uh, we, we go to St Ives in a minute um, we had one bright sunny day and um, Obviously, people think that it's all lovely and sunny down here in Cornwall all the time. Well, it's not. It does rain rather a lot because we're quite exposed to the Atlantic. So um, we had one lovely, bright, sunny day. So me, Joe, um, Arthur and Ottilie, we all went to St Ives, which is just down the road and it's lovely. Um, so um, we'll go to St Ives and, um, and then we'll come back.
So uh, there we were in, in St Ives and um, as you can see I'm a big fan of Alfred Wallace who's uh, a well-known uh, Cornish artist. He was like a naive artist. I've actually got this book here by George Melly called The Tribe of One and uh, there is Alfred Wallace there outside his door there and uh, I think that's is that Ben Nicholson. Yeah, Ben Nicholson with him there. And I, that's the door that I was standing outside of where he used to live. So, um, yeah, these are the type of paintings that Alfred Wallace used to do. So uh, if, you've, if you've not heard of him, he's worth looking up. He was a, 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 a sailor for most of his life. And then as an old man, he became an artist and uh oh this book's lovely it's got loads of pictures of uh alfred wallace's work in there and in there uh, as well as alfred wallace's house we went to his grave and um it's always uh, quite a nice uh, it's a beautiful graveyard it's next to um the tate gallery in st ives and it's got a beautiful view and um, you can see the surfers and everything beneath you and um, I always struggle every time I go it's like they move his grave around but it's it's a beautiful grave and the tiles on the grave there were made by the leech pottery in St Ives as well so it's, it's really beautiful and uh, so so we went looking for the grave and it's a it's a good thing for the kids to do as well look <laughs> look for a grave I and mean, it does stand out because it is very much different to everything else which is like in marble and grey stone and, and of course it's like a, a beigey brown type uh, terracotta um, tiled grave it's very beautiful in itself and uh, while I'm uh, on the subject of uh, artists um, and, and illustrators that I love, uh, it, the sad news that Shirley Hughes died uh, today or yesterday, I think it was. Um, and um, our kids grew up on Shirley Hughes and, and we've got loads of Shirley Hughes books. But her illustrations are so gorgeous. And Mrs Smith can recite whole poems by uh, Shirley Hughes, but uh, absolutely beautiful. Again, really worth a look. And I think there's some YouTube videos with her talking on, on, uh, on them as well. And they're worth a look too. So uh, before I forget, uh, Mug of the Week this week, it's, uh, it's actually a beaker because it doesn't have a handle. Uh, these were designed uh, by my son-in-law, uh, Ollie Kiss. Um, my, um, for those of you that don't know, uh, I've got four daughters and two of those are married to two brothers um, my name is my surname smith so my daughters were called smith and so they married uh, men with a much lovelier name so uh, two of my daughters are now kisses which is lovely so they're married to um, ollie and cow kiss so that's lovely um but um phone's ringing joe while she's out i couldn't get but Last week, I um, I showed you what I'd bought for my stash editions, but she's only gone and watched the show from last week, so she knows what I'm up to. So I haven't been able to get away and get any new stash editions this week. She's still on the phone. Uh, yes, yeah, so Ollie um, made these, uh, or got these made by um, Knee Bone Pottery so um uh they're and they're handmade on the wheel uh and that's for slice of cornwall so uh she's still on the phone but uh, while she's there i thought i might answer a few questions i've had this week um the first one's from sue and she says i would like to start your vest but i already have two projects on needles right now do you have more than one project on the go at a time or are you a monogamous knitter? Well, um, have I got more than one? I've probably got something like 30 on the needles. Um, uh, Mrs. Smith was digging around the other day. And I mean, I've got these, I've got bags of, I've got bags of stuff everywhere full of whips. Um, I start things and of course a lot of the stuff I do is experimental so it, it doesn't oh this is quite a nice one 
just trying to see what's around. So there you can see I'm just experimenting with things there, trying different things out. Um, so yeah, I've probably got about 30 and some of them are just like that and that, that's a swatch really. Um, but then I've got jumpers and blankets and all sorts of things. So yeah, I've got about 30. Um, with regards to um, the thing that we're doing with the vest, well, it doesn't even have to be a vest. You could do a hat or you could do a, you know, the idea is that you just knit something without a pattern. You just start rolling and see where it takes you. So, um, yeah, it could be some socks, a yeah, hat, anything. And, and I think it's something that I'll always keep rolling because I've always got something on the needles that is experimental. You know, I might go back to that. So, you know, this that's off piece knitting as well. So, yeah, it's just, um, am I a monogamous knitter? Uh, if I want to get something done and finished, I will just stick with that until it's done and finished. And sometimes I'll go, go back to something from a few years ago and just get it finished. So, um, yeah, I don't know how it works. No idea, but yeah, I've got loads. I've got loads. That's why I've got no needles because, you know, they're all full. Thanks, Sue. Um, the next one is from Rosie. Are your posters on a grid? Well, I've got... I've got um, I've got prints and then I've got patterns patterns so I've got so obviously something like the cat chart so I've got charts upside down so the cat chart is definitely on the grid you know it is made so that it can be knitted but you can still pull it on the wall um, if you wanted so that's the idea behind those that they can be just a signed print or you can knit from or you can do both um, but then I have my other uh, posters um, that I showed you a few weeks ago and um, I had a, a tiger one and a polar bear and they are purely at the moment they are purely just posters so I uh, hope that answers that one uh, Karen says, uh, do you make Mrs. Smith any knitwear? Um, no, I don't really make her any knitwear. There are things around that would fit her if she wanted to, to wear them, but she doesn't choose to. Uh, so I don't make any anything specifically for her. Maybe I might do one day. But what I do is I'm not you know it's not necessarily for me it's not about making clothing when I knit I um I I knit because it's more about surface pattern or, or surface design that interests me um and and the garments are a subsidiary thing to that and um, while I remember as well I thought I'd talk about um this this one behind me I don't know if you can see it let me move that back a bit. That's it. I'll bring it down. Um, so this is definitely an 80s one. So um, this is interesting because um, this was, I had a painting, a really old painting of a house, uh, like an antique painting in a frame uh, of a Georgian house. And uh, this is the house from the painting. So yes, I knitted, so I knitted the front of it and um, it's it's knitted in in two pieces so it's knitted flat uh, which is what I would have been doing back in the 80s and then on the back I knitted ferrule but that's really early ferrule and I know it's early because um, I, was, I was talking last week about whether I carry the yarn across and on this one I haven't carried the yarn across and actually you can feel on the back there like every other row there is is uh, a uh, just a plain row and um, yeah it's interesting because I've tried to get away with putting as many plain rows in as possible to make it easy for myself but they're all really simple 
very simple pattern on that one get closer and so that's that's probably earlier than the one that what did i show you last week i can't remember but that's probably my earliest bit of farewell that i've shown you um and um the house on the front reminds me of and i don't know if anybody uh, follows jake um but i think you ought to if you don't on instagram uh, and he's called boy in its world and he's recently done the Grand Budapest Hotel as, as a cushion. Amazing bit of work, beautiful work Jake does. I think you ought to follow him. Go and find him on Instagram. Um, the next question was not actually a question. It's Mrs. Smith has written a remark in my questions here. Because last, I don't know if you remember, a couple of weeks ago, she wrote a naughty little question. And then last week I stopped her from writing a question. I've written a load of questions in here and she's just written in between one of my questions. When you laugh, it reminds me of Muttley. Don't know what she's talking about. Rosie says, I think it would be a great episode for you to get your yarn out of boxes and show your stash. Great, isn't it? every week <laughs> at some point um i hope um that mrs smith will go for that i think it would be a great episode get my yarn back together i was thinking maybe sort of buy some shelving get it all lovely all sorted on the shelving a whole episode just devoted to that maybe me going to the shops buying some shelves getting mrs smith to put together some flat pack ikea shelves and we could all watch her do that that would be a great episode and then i could just when she's done i could just put a few little bits on them look great wouldn't it yeah can't see it happening uh, carla says can the next pattern be the blue bird vest um so oh it's over there now keep moving around so right okay Let, let's let's uh, let's talk about it so uh, that is my bluebird vest and and what happened was uh, I knitted that before I realized that people would want to use my patterns so when I knitted it I wasn't selling patterns so um, I did a chart and this is this is the sort of thing that this is a piece of knitting. I don't know where it's gone actually. I'll show you the knitting. But this is this is like one of my old charts with all holes in and falling apart. Well, I did the bluebird chart and it's in worse condition than that. It it was just it was just um drawn onto graph paper and I was scribbling out the rows as I was going along and it was in my knitting bag and stuff like that. And then um and then I kind of realised afterwards that uh, people would have liked to have knitted it. So the plan is that I will at some point turn that into a chart. But um, yeah, it will happen this year at some point this year, I promise you. Um, the other thing that you uh, might have noticed this week is that I've got a little bit more facial hair. Now, usually... I, I let it grow for a couple of weeks and then I chop it off. Um, but uh, I did ask Mrs. Smith this morning, I said, you know, sh should I shave um, before I start recording? And she said, no, no, leave, leave it on. You look like Grizzly Adams. Now, I don't know if that's a good thing. I said, Grizzly Adams? She said, no, no, Chris Christopherson. I don't know if that's a good thing either, but you know. Anyway, we've let it go this week and I'll be back to uh, normal, which is uh, a little less facial hair in future weeks. Um, so, um, mind you, if you're liking, if you're enjoying it, put it in the comments below if you, if you like the, uh, the beardy look. But um, yes, normally it doesn't get as long as this. I don't let it get as long as this. Um, so the, the things that uh, we might potentially look at talking about in future episodes and i've done a list of things that we could talk about and um depending on what you want 
So if you if you comment on the things, the ideas that you like, um, depending on what you want, we'll do some episodes based on this in the future. Now, obviously, my favourite thing is building a home for my stash. Get my stash back together. That would be a great one. So if you could all vote for that, put your comments down below. Get Gary's stash back together. That would be wonderful. Uh, the other thing is uh, Mrs. Smith, she likes going looking for my whips and UFOs. I think she's making a point, really. But um, that's something else. We could get them all out when we could add them up. That would be nice. Uh, it might take a while to do that, because just like with the stash, I suppose you could do them at the same time. Well, you couldn't do them at the same time because they'd be big episodes, both of them. Um, but, you know, when I go up in the loft starting to look for a stash, um, I'm going to find whips all over the place. Right. Uh, the other thing that I thought would make a really good episode and you could please vote for this one because this this would probably be one of my favourite. It's called Mrs. Smith builds flat pack Ikea shelving. That would be a great episode. Wouldn't that be lovely? That would be nice. Um, the other potential um, things that we could do. Crochet corner with yarn gods. Get my brother in. He could do once a month or, it or something, could do a little crochet corner. That would be nice. Thing is, when we were young, I don't know, I don't know anything about his crochet at all. All I know is at some point he went over to the dark side um, and, you know, I've got no idea how or why he did. And, I, you know, I just don't know anything about it. All I know is one day there he is with his crochet hook in his hand and, you know, it's it's pretty much stayed there ever since. So that would make a nice episode. Um, some people have asked for this one, sock darning. I'll be quite happy to do that, no problem. And the other thing is, I'd have to tidy up for this one, so I'm not very, you know, don't vote for this one, studio tour. Now, I don't mind you looking around my studio, but Mrs. Smith would force me to tidy up first. So I don't mind, but, it's a bit of work for me, isn't it, really? So, yeah, if you want to vote for it, vote for it. I, I won't get upset with you, but yeah, it depends what you want. But yes, please vote for those in the comments below. And we love your comments, as you know. And the other thing is, please subscribe because it's the subscribers that are driving us on to make more of these videos, like the videos and press the bell so that you get um, what they call, Joe? updates is it updates That's a bit, i thought it was something else anyway updates get updates okay now i need to have a look at um how i'm getting on with my farewell well i don't think i've got much to show you this week um, but there is a particular thing that i did want to talk about so here it is and when you left me um last week i just um started the fair and i've done three of one color and three of another and and it started i don't know if you can really see i've the, the the lights changed this afternoon this morning it was all rainy and now it's all bright sun in my face um but i don't know if you can see but um what started to emerge and i, I was just doing that thing where I would just make the decision line on line where I was going with it. But it's created what um, what's called um, egg and dart, which is a, I think it's Georgian really, but you get it a lot in plastering, woodwork and that sort of stuff. Um, and, uh, and that's the look. And I kind of quite like it because a lot of what I've done recently has been more angular diamonds and triangles. So I quite liked the idea of doing something that was sort of softer, more curvy. Um, and I've been referring back to this and I thought, I did have a question about, um, I'm going to see if I can find it. I'm going to go away and see if I can find the question. But before I do, uh, I just wanted to say with, with what I was saying to you about this pattern is I was looking at this and the pattern the pattern there i stopped that pattern and then i did this and then i've done a mirror up here so this mirrors that but 
the the other thing about it is that the scale of that is slightly different to that so i don't know if that sort of distance is maybe uh 12 stitches and that's 10 stitches but i changed the scale and i did that to start throwing the eye around so i want to do this again but um i'm just going to go and find that question and i'll come back hey i found it it was a question from sarah and she says uh do you pre-plan how tone will affect the design for example do you work uh from overall darker tones at the bottom of the vest to lighter tones at the top or do you just pick it up as you go along well interestingly and i've been i've been thinking about this one for um uh, a few months i suppose it's been sort of going around in my mind and and what i wanted to do um tone what, what we're talking about uh, is contrast so light to dark dark to light and obviously i'm i've decided because I, I somehow sort of convinced myself to sort of keep it quite dark and go for sort of dark moody tones but i started off with a very light edge so when i finish it i'll probably end up with uh, a light bit of ribbing around the neck and and the armholes but also i've been thinking what i might like to do and this is something that's yeah been in the back of my mind for a while is go, go dark into light so as i go to this to the middle section there where everything's reflected so there's a reflected bottom and top along that line but i'm going to move that line up if that makes sense so that's going to be more like under my arms that line rather than across my belly um, and then i'm going to have that that central area a lot lighter than the top and the bottom so yeah so the answer really is do i pre-plan it i don't really pre-plan it it's something that was in the back of my mind but tone is definitely something that i think about and i've really not talked about tone enough because it, it it's quite important i suppose but uh, mrs smith's trying to hurry me along because this episode is going to end up very long if i carry on talking and i could talk about things like this forever but um so the answer is yes i do think about tone thank you um so uh, that's it on the the update of the uh, feral fest um it's not much of an update really because i was doing lots of drawing in this episode um but uh, we'll up update you as it goes along um so that's it for today really um next week uh, oh while while i'm thinking of it um we we originally thought we'd we'd do sunday nights but um we we tried a friday and the friday really worked for us so i think we might try to aim in future to do um to put our podcasts out on a friday so everyone's got them for the weekend if they if they want to watch it at the weekend it's it's ready for them then so that might be our day we don't know yet mm decide as it happens i suppose uh the next couple of weeks might be um because we've got quite a lot on over the next couple of weeks so um we might even get next week's episode out earlier we'll see uh, just before we go whilst we were filming um mrs um, smith made me this lovely um vegan banana bread so there you go she does stuff for me lovely thanks so that's it for today. Next week we are going to, we'll have an update on the vest. Uh, we will also be charting up the hair pattern, uh, ready for that to be a baby blanket or a vest. So um, that's it today. So it's good night from me and good night from her. Bye.